Hey everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in here. Um, just wanted to do an update on my garden video series and today I'm starting off here in the back garden and uh, right now I'm looking at some cantaloupe that I planted and uh, they're progressing pretty nicely and actually there's uh, one on the vine here I'm going to zoom in on if I can. So uh, they are starting to uh, set some fruit and uh, hope I have better luck with them this year. Um, I had not grown them for a few years because I seem to be having problems with uh, like wilt with them. And uh, here's another hill of uh, some melons and they're not doing quite as, as good. I don't know why right from uh, from the get-go from the seeds they just never quite caught up with the uh, the other hill and uh, I'm gonna walk you over here to um, my sweet potatoes they've uh, finally took off and are doing pretty well and uh, you can see the row doing quite well now and uh, walk over here this is uh, some sweet corn that I planted. Not doing quite as well as my Silver Queen is, but this uh, this corn never did get quite that tall. And you might notice some of it has already started to tassel. So uh, I'm not quite sure what uh, what this will yield, but I'll keep it watered and uh, we'll see see what I net from it and uh, over here my last row have some watermelon growing and uh, these aren't uh, really taking off but they're starting to uh, starting to, to spread here and spread out more um, not sure which ones these are I believe these are the uh, the larger red watermelons I forget the variety off the top of my head and uh, yeah, some weeds here and parts of the garden I got to get to. I try to get the cultivators out here tonight it, now that it's cooled off and try to clean some of this up. Uh, these here are my oblong shaped watermelon, uh, the variety that'll get up to maybe 40 or 50 pounds, maybe a little more, uh, depending on soil conditions. And I'll take you down to the end here. These are the smaller uh, variety watermelons maybe get about six or eight inches in diameter and uh, there's actually some already out here setting I'll try to show you there's one and another one back there and uh, few on the other plant so they're doing pretty well they uh, seem to be doing pretty good here they like to seem to like the heat since we've had the heat kick in uh, they're growing quite well really starting to sprawl out and speaking of heat it's been up in the 90s here in uh, Hickory North Carolina area where I'm from and uh, gardens getting kind of dry See this back garden here, it's pretty dry. If you dig down a little ways, there's some moisture in the soil. And uh, I've been watering, keeping up with the watering back here. I'm gonna walk up to the front garden, show you what's going on. And uh, I am going to stop the video. You don't need to see me uh, trudging up to the, uh, the front garden. And I'll start filming when I get up there. Okay, I'm up here at the front garden, and I'm starting out of kind of the order I normally do, uh, doing it kind of backwards today. These are my potato plants, and you can see they're dying back. They're ready to be harvested. Uh, actually, I did harvest a couple of the uh, the plants already, the red potatoes, and uh, 
actually had some for dinner already they were pretty good um has some other varieties here i believe the one is a german butterball type variety and the last couple plants down here were just some store bought variety um don't know what they were and uh i just noticed something odd here um on this one potato plant <laughs> i have uh never seen that before so kind of strange <laughs> well if anybody knows what that is uh, maybe they could comment on that um, I've never seen uh, potato plants actually have something like that on the vine to me it actually almost looks like a little apple very weird alrighty I'm gonna walk up here to my corn and uh, as I had mentioned it's been pretty hot uh, so we have soaker hoses out here for the corn and they do a good job um, we were hand watering with a nozzle and a hose and uh, it just got to be too much you can't keep up with the water demands in this heat it's been up in the 90s and uh, very hot and dry we've really not had any rain to mount anything and uh, this is the uh, Silver Queen corn, and it is really tall now. Uh, if I walk in these rows here, I might walk in little ways. I mean, this corn is up over my head, and I'm, I'm six feet tall. So uh, I'd say some of these stalks at the tops of the tassels are probably seven feet or a little better. And uh, you can see the corn is producing ears now so uh, now it's critical make sure you get enough water in here for the uh, the corn <clears throat> and uh, take you back to the next set of rows here and if you notice these stubs this was my uh, if you recall my cauliflower and broccoli uh, they're done for the heat has been too much uh, most of it's went to seed so I just chopped it down and uh, that's the end of it for the season till the fall and uh, I'll put in some more and uh, take a walk over here to my peppers and as you can see that's my row of peppers they're doing pretty good we've had a few peppers off there and I'm gonna swing over here to the tomato plants and now at the very end here we have some cherry tomatoes and we've already eaten um, a bunch of cherry tomatoes and there's Play more as you can see in there and uh, here's my other tomato plants uh, these particular variety you're looking at is my porterhouse tomatoes and uh, they're doing really nicely and uh, getting get some good sides to them it's hard to tell in the video and then I have my beefsteak tomatoes I've already pulled uh, a couple of beef steaks off the uh, the vines and they were good very uh, very meaty tomato at least the ones I had gotten so far and uh, this row here is my wife's plum tomatoes that she wants to can and uh, this particular brand I won't mention the company I bought the seed from but they're called Big Mama tomatoes and as you can see I'm getting end rot and uh, this variety has done this to me a couple of times now um, since I've grown them the first fruits that set look very good and then the next set of fruits the younger fruit that starts to uh, set winds up with end rot I don't know why uh, I've been keeping them watered well uh, it's not a water issue um, I water them you know I keep a, a constant supply of water on them I don't let them dry out and then drown them and the other tomatoes the porterhouse and beefsteak are doing fine and uh, 
these just seem to do it. I've tried um, spraying uh, some calcium on the leaves themselves from my sprayer and uh, I think my next trick is going to be I'm going to get some lime in the, from the garage and dump some in a five gallon pail, add water to it, make a slurry and water around the plants with that to try to get a uh, boost of calcium up to the tomato plants. I know most of the time end rot is either a watering issue or uh, deficiency of calcium in the soil. And I did put lime down, quite a bit of lime down before I uh, planted these this spring. So uh, I don't know. I think I might just give up on uh, this particular brand or variety and try another variety next year because um, I'm not going to get out of this what I should because I see so many of them within rot. And uh, moving on over here to my beans. And uh, this is the last two rows I planted. They're not quite ready to uh, produce yet. These are the other rows I planted earlier in the year and we've been picking from them. Uh, I think we've had uh, my wife's canned close to 14 quarts of string beans, which is really not a lot. Um, previous years with the runner type beans, not the bush type beans, um, my wife was able to can close to 30 or 40 quarts. And as I had mentioned in the previous video, we would uh, do that like every other year. Um, but since these don't produce quite as uh, heavily as my uh, runner beans did, um, we'll can what we can, and I'll grow some more next year. Um, one thing I will say, uh, we find the flavor of these uh, a little bit more appealing. Uh, we like them better. Uh, of course, that's everybody has a different preference, so I'm not saying these are better than the other ones, just we prefer the taste of them. Uh, one thing I will say is I don't have to stake the rows and set up trellises and wires for the uh, beans to run up on. So uh, labor-wise, there, there's a lot less labor involved. And because of that, I can get through here with the cultivators since I don't have poles and stakes in the way and I can continue to cultivate throughout the, uh, the growing season, which is, uh, is a big plus. So next year, uh, since I've learned a little bit from, from growing them uh, this year, next year I will just plant more rows and uh, that'll be fine. Won't really be any extra work, as I said, I don't have to stake them. I don't have to put up runners. Uh, or trellises so um, with that I guess I'll wrap up the video I just wanted to do uh, a follow up to my third video so this is video four of my garden series and uh, when I start pulling in some more fruit and things I will post or I should say tomatoes and things I will uh, post some videos I'm gonna wrap this up I have some uh, cultivating to do since it's cooled off out here and I get the tractor through some of my rows, and uh, once I get done with that, i got to get some water out to uh, that back garden. And uh, once I finish up with that, I'll go in the house. It'll probably be dark by then, but that's fine. Uh, at least it's cool enough to work out here without uh, getting heat stroke. So again, thank you everybody for watching my videos. And if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. And uh, thank you again for uh, watching my video. Have a good day.